Today, I'm going to be unveiling the secrets of the runes. Literally, spell out divination for you. Runes are a Viking alphabet. The word rune actually means secret or mystery. It's supposed to connect you to the spirit world through a divine alphabet. When I work with them, I always think of them like a bunch of very boisterous Vikings that are shouting at me. There's only 24 of them because it is an alphabet. They tend to be very blunt and very straightforward. So if you don't get the message from them, then you're just not looking closely enough. What I like about working with runes is that they are so versatile. You can use them for a lot of different things besides just a reading. You can use them to write messages. You can use them for spell work. When you're doing a reading with them, because they are so versatile, it's very easy to combine them with another medium. I will lay out crystals for the chakras and I will do a reading off of each chakra with the roots. It's very easy to put them into any type of medium that you're used to working with and they'll blend very nicely. I don't see as many women reading runes. It just seems to be something that men are a little bit more drawn to. My brother was very into Norse mythology because he loved reading Thor comic books. He found this set of runes because it's all through the comic books. You see everything, whenever you're talking about Thor, you're talking about Odin, there are actually runes that represent those particular gods. So there is a Thor's hammer rune. So my brother gets this set of runes and he gets the book that comes with them. And he starts reading them, and every time he pulled a set of runes, he didn't like them. He didn't like the reading he was getting. So finally, in frustration, he just kind of threw this whole set at me and says, here, you take them. So I have been reading with them ever since he just kind of gave me this set of runes. I do have the book that comes with them, but I found that over the years, you kind of build a relationship with the runes. They're very similar to another part of my background, which is martial arts. And when you're studying martial arts, you will learn how to draw the Asian characters because that is the background, that is the basis of a lot of the movements, a lot of the culture, and a lot of the knowledge that comes within. A character that represents a concept as opposed to just a letter or a word, such as this particular one which would mean balance, it can mean peace, it can mean a bunch of different things because you will get peace from balance. Whereas with the runes you will have a little picture. And again it's the same idea where it is a representation of a concept. And depending on how they fall, if you put it next to this one, it's going to start to tell a story. And that's how you start revealing their secrets because they will speak to you depending on the way they fall depending on the order in which they fall, and depending on whether they are upright or upside down. So all of this is just a way of kind of decoding the messages that you're getting from the universe and the way of connecting to your spiritual self. You have three sets of eight, and each set is dedicated to a different god or goddess. The first set, it kind of represents the body. The second set represents the mind. And then the third set represents the spirit. So when you start pulling out these runes and you start noticing that you're getting a lot from say the set that has to do with the mind, that's kind of pointing you in a direction that maybe you need to focus on this a little bit more. Maybe you need to work on your mindset a little bit more. If you're doing a past, present, future, you might have one from each set and that will show a level of balance. So it's always interesting to see how do you pull them, what kinds are you pulling. Your relationship with this particular medium can be very personal. I think the reason that I love runes so much is that they come in so many different types of mediums. You can have cards, you can have crystals, you can have wooden runes, you can have bone runes. I tend to work with whatever medium is in season. So in the spring and also the summer, I may work more with the wooden runes or the cards, which are also made of wood. 
then when it gets into the darker half of the year, the colder half of the year, that's when I'm gonna switch to crystal runes, or my favorite is the stone runes. Gives it a little bit more weight, maybe the reading goes a little bit slower when you cast them, but everything comes a little bit more heavier at the dark half of the year because that is the most introspective part of the year. I've seen them cast from a chalice. I've seen them cast from a horn. But most often, because we keep them in the bag, a little shake up, get some in your hand, thinking about whatever you're trying to get guidance on, and there you go. And that's your basic cast. Looking at the way they fell, are they right side up? Are they reverse? Are they closer to you or are they further away? This is the most immediate moving towards the future. And I like the fact that there's actually four in this spread because I would look at this as a year read and these would be each of the seasons. So this would be the closest to what's going on right now. And then eventually by the end of the year, I'm looking at my favorite rune of all, which is the gauze, the breakthrough or the butterfly of transformation. The other nice thing that I really like about runes is that there's so many different styles. So this particular one, comes in a case, you can actually cast, and then I could do a past, present, and future spread. And this is actually a pretty good one. The energy is rising, there's a little bit of a new birth, and then it does show abundance in my future. When they're laid out like this, I could separate them by those three sets of eight, which are called Ets. The set for the body, the set for the mind, and a set for the spirit. You can have them separated out. I tend not to do that. I tend to put them back in an assortment because that way I never know what I'm gonna get. So this set, my husband got me as a Christmas gift. And I love this first off because it's just a nifty little box. Runes, they can run all over the place. They can get a little loud if you're trying to shuffle them. And this is a nice way of moving from, say, if you're used to working with tarot or oracle cards, this is a nice way of bridging the gap. I've found that a lot of the runes do correspond to the major arcana in tarot. So it is a nice way to make that transition. Lay them out the same way that you would if you were doing a reading of cards. So you would separate the three, and then you would flip over the top of each one, and I'm getting a lot of the same cards which is very interesting. Look at this. There's Thor's hammer, and there's the lightning bolt. Pretty good reading. So we're going from, again, the seed splitting apart. Now what's interesting about this is out of the three that I've pulled, two of my runes don't have a reverse. So if I flip them over, it's the same thing upside down. That's going to mean that the particular message that you're getting from that rune is extra emphatic, because no matter what way you look at it, that's the way the energy is going. Luckily, both of these are very positive. One is showing growth, things are starting to split apart. It is saying that some things may have to be resolved from the past and just kind of moving into the direction and making sure that you're letting go of things you don't need. And then we get into the future, which is very close to the sun or victory in tarot, which is the lightning bolt. Success is imminent. So this one's actually pretty cool because that's happiness. Step in the right direction. And then also getting your signals from the universe. Not bad.